Okay, I'm going to show you a couple quick science demonstrations here that uh, you can use uh, in your classroom or uh, different presentations that you're doing. The first is obviously uh, the uh, Mentos geyser tube. This is a very popular one. Uh, just imagine a full two liter bottle of soda, any soda of your choice, uh, and you would make sure that you take your tube on your full bottle of soda. You want to make sure that you screw this down tight on that soda. Now the tube is designed so you can take the top off. There's a pin here with, within the tube and a, a slider guide here. Uh, this is on there so when the tube is actually or the pin is actually pulled out it covers up the two holes uh, that are there for the pin. As you see the pin goes the whole way through that tube. Now what you're going to want to do is go ahead and load your tube up with your Mentos there you go and then make sure that you put the cap back on now you see the cap has a tiny little hole in that uh, this, is, this is a good way to explain actually um, uh, the, like the nozzle on a, on a rocket engine and how you have all the pressure built up inside and it fights to get out that tiny little hole and actually will, will push the rocket upward. So now uh, you have your pin in there. I always keep my thumb on there safely uh, and I'll set this up for the kids. Uh, we've had a couple accidental discharges with the kids doing it uh, and just by accidentally pulling the pin out uh, before you're ready because the Mentos will drop into your soda. So I always prepare them and I'll say ready on the launch pad and they'll say ready. I'll say commence countdown, and they start in countdown three, two, one. They pull the pin, the Mentos drop into this bottle of soda, and uh, you have probably are aware of uh, the results of that. So again, that's just a quick Mentos uh, geyser experiment. In other videos I'm going to make here, I'm going to actually show you how to make some on your own because the, the geyser tubes you can find those online probably for about five dollars or so okay now I have a couple other things I have a, another video up uh, recently on how to use the super absorbent polymer crystals the gel crystals uh, there's a couple on each of the tubes I have the clear ones and I have the colored ones the colored ones are actually the clear ones that were put into colored water and you can use food coloring, uh, Easter dyes, whatever works for you. And actually, if depending on where you purchase your crystals, you can get a little booklet here that tells you uh, some more, some additional experiments. Now you can do a number of things. Uh, you can put them in cups. What I like to do is repurpose things. I have an egg carton tray here that that I use. I'll put a couple crystals in there, add the water, and then observe as we go. Also if you want something that you can reuse and it's substantial, pretty sturdy, uh, I always look for those uh, ice cube trays at yard sales, places like that. Other polymers that, that are really handy and, and fun to play with, uh, we have um, this instant snow powder. Uh, you can, by adding water to it, it, it bubbles up and, and actually looks like snow and then there's slush powder uh, which is a really really fine powder uh, it's actually you can be harvested out of baby's diapers um, you can cut baby's diapers up put them in a big ziploc uh, bag and shake it and all the fine powder will come out you can remove then the remnants of the, the thing and you'll have your own slush powder now uh, just by adding a little water to the to the slush uh, it'll, it'll turn to gelatin and it's, you can play around with that and develop all sorts of neat science tricks. You probably find some of those online as well. And with the instant snow and with the slush powder, again, depending upon where you purchase them, you'll actually get like the little booklets that'll that'll explain some of the experiments with you. To you, how's that? Okay. Oftentimes you do activities that includes balloons. You know, obviously there's a bunch of potential energy inside of this balloon. It's just air wanting to get out. That's why it's blown up. Uh, so when you're uh, doing some work with uh, potential energy and kinetic energy, um, I always use the balloons, balloon rockets and rocketry as well. 
Uh, what happens though is that as part of a, an issue uh, with balloons, if you have kids in balloons, they become a distraction quickly. So they're going to either make noise or they're going to pop them or, or whatever. So you can control that and actually manage that uh, just by doing another experiment. Get yourself a nice little bamboo skewer, make sure that, it, that it's relatively smooth. You have your balloon that's blown up, usually probably about three quarters away. As you see on the, on the tip there and towards the, the neck um, is, is where I'm going to make the entry. And sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. But you, you put the skewer right on the balloon and you start rotating it as, as quickly as you can. Let it develop some heat. Go through then to the other side. Uh, do the same thing. And believe it or not, you can take a skewer like that and stick it right through a balloon. Now this will eventually go down. Sometimes they last pretty good. I've actually had kids uh, put 12, 13 skewers through the same balloon. Uh, so that's just one way of taking care of the balloon issue. That might be a distraction. All right. Some of you, oh, let me reclaim this uh, geyser tube. And this is really fun to do with big, big bottles of soda. Uh, I've created my own little uh, vortexes. You can get these online for a couple dollars. Uh, and they're just bottle connectors is what they're called, vortexes and there's a couple different things that you can do with them obviously you want to connect two bottles one with water one without and you can see what happens if you just turn it over you'll see the glug 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 the air trying to get out of here into this other bottle so what's really cool though and I'll try that again so, so you can see the the bubbles uh, doing that and how long it takes you can actually time that now if you want the air to work in your favor when you turn this over, give it a quick spin, and that's what creates the vortex. And the, and the water and the air is able to exchange a lot quicker. So what I'd like to do is have two of these, and I'll bring a kid up into the front with me, and I'll challenge them to a competition on who can go faster. When they turn theirs over, like normally, they would just let it chug through. If you turn yours over, give it a spin, you're going to win every time. Keep an eye out for another video. I'll teach you how to make one of these. They're $1.79, two bucks online, in about with about 10 cents worth of parts and pieces. I can get you going on your own. It's something the kids like to do as well. Well, I prepare here for my next one. Uh, I like these uh, film canister rockets. We'll actually have the kids take a Fuji film canister. Uh, we'll use index cards. They'll actually build their own rocket and put a cone on it and fins. And I like to just demonstrate uh, this is part of Rocket Camp in particular. But then you can also do other experiments with it. Uh, and you take a, a quarter of an effervescent tablet, uh, whatever it is that you want to get, uh, polydent or they're like alka seltzer type things, cheap alternatives. I go with those if you can. Um, and you just take a, a film caster with a little water in it, you drop that in there, and you turn it upside down. Now, I always recommend that you do this stuff um, outside or in a safe place. You never do this at home, or if you do, make sure that your, knife is, your wife is not around uh, while you're doing these things. So you want to just be really careful because, you know, sometimes you can actually um, take an eye out with one of these. So I'll get on to the next part of the experiment. If you go to your local Walmarts or Walgreens, whatever it is that, that actually still develops film, uh, one of the things that you'll want to do um, is ask them to save film canisters for you. As you see here, I have five different film canisters. You can have the kids take a look at them, see which ones are going to work the best uh, with, with the rockets. And usually this is done a lot quicker than it is now. Uh, maybe it, you know, it's just an old uh, canister as well. So if you have these five different film canisters, I would challenge the kids to figure out what combinations of water and what combinations of the Alka-Seltzer or effervescent tablets uh, work the best within those containers. Uh, and that, they can actually develop their own experiment with those. Sometimes you have to help them along. The, the seals on those little uh, uh, Fuji film canisters get to be a little tight. All right, one final experiment here. 
uh, that my kids really love doing this one. It, and if you do like science magic or you want to do a demonstration and have the kids do this and be somewhat successful, it, it's pretty cool. You just take a container with some baking soda in it. You take your white vinegar. As you see what happens when you pour that in there, it bubbles up there. Obviously, when it bubbles up there, it's releasing its carbon dioxide and, it, and it's filling up the container. Now, I have this lit for a reason. Uh, obviously, what does a match or what does a candle or what does flame need to, uh, as, as material so that it can, it can burn? Well, it needs oxygen. So, one of the things that I like to do with this, and hopefully this, you know, again, this is one of those that sometimes it's successful, sometimes it isn't. Uh, but you take your container here. As you see, this one's empty. And you pour and pour, nice and easy. You want to make sure not to get any um, liquid in your cup. You keep pouring that until it's right out to the very edge. You saw that there wasn't any liquid poured in here. So what I do now, The trick to this one, it's really cool, is that the carbon dioxide is actually heavier than the air. So you can take the carbon dioxide, pour it from one container into another, and then pour that over the candle. The carbon dioxide takes the air away from the, the burning flame and smothers it. So that's pretty much it for um, today. I would just like to say thanks and I hope you have fun with this.